Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Hello, Lick. Hello. Nice, nice to see you. Uh, so, well, first thing is I believe that you checked already in the WhatsApp group that tomorrow we are not going to have classes, right? Yes, so some... yes, yes, Lick. Nice. So... Uh, just remember that one and remember that on Monday we're going to continue in a normal way. Okay, and speaking about the Independence Day, uh, what activities do you usually did you usually do when you were a kid at school? Do you remember anything like that? Yes, in my uh, case, I remember that I I used to dance with um with my friends. Okay, in the, I don't know how to say acto civico <laughs> in English. Yeah, you can say the civical act. Okay. Okay, that's uh, the um, the activity that I used to do in high school. Okay, very good. Interesting. Any other opinion or comments on what you usually did uh, for, let's say, Independence Day? I remember that, uh, I don't know if how, how it was in your times, but I remember also that uh, almost all the months we do many things, right? So uh, at, at least in my school, I was in a Catholic school. Uh, they, uh, there was an act every day. So in every grade, they used to have, for example, first grade was the first one and second grade was the second one and so on. So every grade did something and also uh, we always read the, the prayer to the flag. Do you know what is flag? Okay, flag is a bandera. So uh, do you remember that one, the prayer to the flag? Not at all. <laughs> okay. And did you used to march? Yes, I I practice. Okay. I practice in March and uh study study bachelor senior. <laughs> yes, yeah, I remember that that was I mean Long time ago was something that we used to do uh, as a, an obligation, right? You have to march and things like that. One. And there were, uh, do you know what is a cheerleader by any chance? Corista. Exactly. So there were lots of cheerleaders and the people from the band, right? Anybody here played an instrument at school uh, from September? for the Independence Day? My song, my song is cheerleader. I mean, so that is my very good. Daughter, my daughter, my daughter. And is, is she marching <laughs> tomorrow then? No, she, she marched and last, last uh, Sunday. Ah, okay, last Sunday, very good. So, yeah, I know that sometimes that happens, right? I remember that back in the days when I was a kid, everybody did it on September 15th. But now yeah. I know that uh, sometimes some schools, they do it on uh, some days before, the day before or the, or the weekend before, right? So that happens as well. So do you believe that all these customs have changed. I mean, it's the same. Yes, in the uh, huh? go ahead. In the downtown, uh, to be to be and um, practice and and another day for look the principal desfile and 
in the street for um, Salvador del Mundo and Park Cuscatlan, Cuscatlan Park. Okay, so yeah, that is that is going to be tomorrow, right? Tomorrow they are going yes. to they are going to have the the principal parade. Yes. And what time do they start? Do you know? Uh, four four a.m. close the street. Oh my goodness, that is very early. Yes. And more or less, what time do they finish all the schools to? To do the parade. The uh, ten ten o'clock finish the mar march. Ah, okay, that is good because it's not that yes. much time. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I am... yes. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I tomorrow is uh, the wrong bike. Yeah. Right. Let's see how yes. how it goes. Six six a.m. At 6 a.m. Yes. And uh, go ahead, please. Uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem Street, and go to go ahead the San Marcos, eh, perdón, San Ramon, and escalate the, the mountain, and Picacho. Okay. <clears throat> so it's interesting, right? How many things happen just one day. And uh, I was going to ask you, do you believe by any chance uh, that all these uh, civic, let's say, the things that we do on September 15, 15, is the same uh, than years ago or is, uh, is different? How is different this day? Different what or why? I mean, uh, the celebration is different now from what happened, like say, ten years ago, or anything like that. Ah, yes, it's different. <clears throat> I understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I understand for independence. Independence is uh, not and, and university open years, open years and. No, at all con el dedo. Ah, yeah. <laughs> analyze, analyze reality. The... the the situation, actuality. Yeah, many things have changed, right? So now we know that, I mean, uh, the world, the country is in a different situation. And... Uh, uh, well, tomorrow I have to work, so I was wondering which streets are closed. Do you know which streets are going to be closed? I know. So I, I believe uh, which streets are closed tomorrow. Ah, okay. And Salvador del Mundo, Paseo General Escalón, and Roosevelt. Ah, okay. So it's not that much. And they finish everything in Salvador del Mundo, I guess. No, no. Finish in Parque Cuscatlán. Ah, okay. Parque Cuscatlán. Yes. So they start at Salvador del Mundo. Yes. Salvador del Mundo start in Go Ahead and Rubén Darío and finish in Cuscatlán Park. Okay. Okay, that is interesting. Uh, I believe that if you have uh, sons and daughters, probably you are going to see and watch that one. But the ones that don't have any son or daughter that is going to march, are you still going to see the parade? Or you don't, you don't go at all? If you don't have any family there, you don't go? No, no. No, I never... <laughs> Never go. I really never in your life have gone? No, I know. I don't go. Okay. So yeah, here in Santa Ana is a little bit different. The the current yeah will start around six in the morning and I don't know, I don't know. It is very large because I remember that they finish around 
noon or sometimes even at uh, 1 p.m. So it's, it's a large thing here. Yes. Avenue Independence. Close. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, they are marching through Independence Avenue and they finish downtown and uh, people are watching there. And uh, what is what is uh, what are the most famous schools there? The the ones that are very nice in the parade in San Salvador. Mm, parade, parade is celebration. Desfile. Ah, ese so, es el más vistoso. Yes, el, es el de porque van militares también. Ah, okay. No, but I was asking uh, which schools are the 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 best ah, in the parade. Ah, in Frame, IT, and que ver si esos son las más las las cachiporras más vistosas y las bandas las mejores bandas. I'm sorry, which one? In Frame. Ah. Ajá. Anglo Americano. Um, ¿Cuál otro es? Hispanoamericano. Ok. Uh, y ti también el Instituto Técnico. El Exal. No. Ah, yeah, Exal is very famous. Ah. I remember that. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my wife is studying in Brahmin. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's all, it's all no, it's very good. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> she doesn't like that. Yes. <laughs> the the Flamen is a very good. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that happens. I remember that sometimes they, there are rivals, right? There are some schools that they want to be the best, and there are other schools that are like rivals. So that happens a lot as well. <laughs> yes. okay interesting so um again tomorrow we don't have classes i don't know if you're going to work uh, in your regular jobs i am going to work so no vacations no, for me no. only at night no hubiera, dicho, no hubiera dicho teacher a ver quién se conectaba <laughs> ah yeah well that would be no good ya hemos, ya hemos visto algunos ahí que andan ah, really? el día yeah, so they, they, they're bien. asking hey in the class <laughs> Ajá, es muy divertido. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to check the chat to see what's going on. Okay, so let's check the attendance and let's move on. Okay, um, Aida Isabel López Bonilla. I'm here, teacher. Good. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Present. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Here, teacher. Good. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidoni. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avidez Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present teacher. 
Good. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. And Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Ok, got you, Monica. And, ok, Víctor, so we'll be listening. Ok, so we're going to start then uh, tonight's class and we're going to start with a video. All this week is it was about the video and we're going to check. Well, you are going to uh, check and tell me what you understand on the video. Okay, this is again kind of different. Let's see how it goes, okay? So let me just check here. Okay, here we go. So check pronunciation, check what you understand, and then we're going to comment. You're going to give opinion about the video. All right, here we go. Hello TEDx. Boy, am I excited to be here today. And I'm excited for two reasons. Firstly, I have had a TEDx talk on my vision board since the day I had a vision board. And secondly, <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, when I heard today's theme, not business as usual, I felt that my industry of social media couldn't have been better fitting with today's subject. Mike Stelzner, who's head of Social Media Examiner, once said that social media is the fastest moving industry in the world. And you know yeah. what? I love it. I love the fact that businesses can find audiences, can grow their wealth and their knowledge by reaching out to different people all over the world. I love the fact that I can see my friend's children growing up or what my friends do on their holidays. And I love the fact that I can be connected to people all over the world without ever having met them. This guy is called Tony and Tony lives in the Cook Islands. And Tony and I started to connect over Instagram because we share the same passion for social media and follow the same people. Hey, kia ora everybody at TEDx in Telford uh, from the beautiful and uh, really busy beaches here on Rarotonga in the Cook Islands. Uh, my name is Tony and I want you to enjoy a wonderful talk today with the fabulous Teresa Heath wearing and uh, maybe come visit the Cook Island sometimes. Get on Teresa. Can I keep it? <laughs> what a nice guy. Tony is a lovely, lovely guy. And like I said, I think the fact that I can show you a film like that is phenomenal. I had no idea where the Cook Islands was when I started talking to Tony and I had to Google where it was. That's where the Cook Islands is. It's in the middle of the ocean on the other side of the planet and we know each other because of social media. So to start my story, I want to take you back to 2004. Facebook had just launched and I had just graduated from this very university with a BA Honours in Marketing. And I couldn't wait to get started, to do my first marketing job where I could put into practice all those amazing theories I had learned and build a marketing strategy and do all those cool things. And my first job as a marketing assistant was mainly spent doing things like franking letters for direct mail campaigns and sending fax campaigns. You heard me right, fax. For the younger people in the audience, someone is going to have to explain to you what a fax is. <laughs> However, after 10 years in marketing, four years ago, I decided I wanted to start my own business. So I was going to specialize in social media for businesses. And I immediately came up with two problems. Problem number one, every man and his dog was doing social media and they weren't necessarily doing it at the level that I wanted to do it at. The second problem was businesses just didn't take it seriously at all. They often chose the youngest person in the office to do their social media strategy. They looked at the person who would occasionally send a tweet or had some friends on Facebook and decided they would hand over their entire social media strategy to them. They just didn't see that it was part of marketing and therefore they didn't take it seriously at all. So when I started my business, I started with the main aim to not only educate but teach businesses to not only just do social media, but to love social media. So let me bring you up to present day. It's 2018 and there are currently approximately 4.1 billion internet users, 54% of the globe's population. To put it into perspective, 
2.46 billion of those people are social media users. Crazy thought. So with this in mind, I want to explain the two ways in which I think social media has changed marketing forever. First off, in communication and how we communicate. Social media has encouraged us to share everything with the world. I want to tell you what I had for breakfast, where I went for dinner last night, and how many miles I've run. I'm kidding, I've never run. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is more like the stuff I share on social media. And if you can't read it, it says, working from home means I can start drinking earlier. That's a fact. <laughs> But in all seriousness, social media has opened up to worlds that we never knew about, causes that we could never understand until social media came along. Also, we no longer just talk in text. We no longer just send a text or send an email. We now have these amazing, innovative, lovely ways in which we can communicate. There are emojis and bitmojis and the most amazing face filters from Snapchat that my daughter and I just love. You can go live in seconds to millions of people across the world and you can share with them some of the most amazing things that happen. And in terms of businesses, we have changed the way in which we communicate with our customers. We use platforms like Twitter in order to communicate with them. This is Tesco Mobile and they use their Twitter account as a customer services tool. So no longer if you have a complaint, do you need to pick up the phone, fill in a form, do some long, arduous process, you literally send a tweet. And then wait, and hopefully within a fairly rapid amount of time, they're gonna tweet you back to deal with your problem. Also, social media is now a hotbed of research. Gone are the days when I first finished my degree where we had to do focus groups, or long questionnaires, or telephone interviews. No, if you wanna know something, head into a Facebook group that talks about that thing and find out the problems that those people have got. Put a tweet online to find out what issues people are dealing with. If you're thinking of starting a new product and you're not sure what color to do it, put it out to the world of social media and ask them and wait for your responses to come flooding back. Also, as a marketer, we've had to change who we are. Not only are we just marketing the products, we're having to become creative and innovative content creators. We're having to put together blogs and podcasts and videos in order to keep you entertained, to keep you coming back to see us. So the other area that I think that it's really impacted on is the reach that we now have in the world. Let's take Facebook, for instance. What Facebook knows about us personally is terrifying. However, from a business point of view, I swear it's the best thing I have ever seen. Their advertising platform is phenomenal. So I can put an advert out today and I can target you not only based on how old you are, what sex you are and where you are in the country or in the world, I can actually target you on what salary you might earn. I can target you on what job title you have, if you have children and if so, how old those children are. And I can target you if you're a Sainsbury shopper and you like playing netball at the weekend. It really is an amazing tool from a marketer's point of view. Also, Facebook have a pixel, and this is a bit of code that you can put on your website so they can even track who's visiting your site and you can market back to them. Amazing. And what this has done in terms of advertising spend, both on the internet and TV, is crazy. The line going from the bottom to the top, that's internet advertising spend and that's plotted against TV advertising spend. So in 2016, it overtook TV spend. Also, another way to reach your audiences is in the growing phenomena that is influencer marketing. This is where a person sets up a profile on social media and shares with the world what interests them. And they start to gain followers and people start to be interested in their life and what they're doing. They get to a point where they're so big that businesses and companies and brands want to come and work with them so that they can help them share their product and message out there as well. Take Zoella. Zoella worked with WH Smith. She did a book club where she showed a load of books on her channel and it's reported that the books that were featured within her book club saw sales increase by 11,000%. So it's just a phenomenon train that I can only see is gonna keep growing. 
And another way in which you can reach big audiences is by going viral. Now granted, this is a little bit harder to do and you can't necessarily guarantee this is a marketing strategy. However, when it happens, it can accelerate your business to another level. So this screenshot here is of a video on YouTube from the Dollar Shave Club. And I urge you to go and watch it because I swear it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. But basically, these guys set up this video and it cost them four and a half thousand dollars to do this video. Not a massive amount of money in the scheme of things. They put the video online and within 48 hours, they had received over 12,000 orders. That video has now been viewed 25 million times and that accelerated their company overnight. So, as you can see, businesses that really take hold and enjoy social media can really reap the rewards. Now, I said at the beginning, this is one of the fastest moving industries in the world, so it's not going to stop there. We're only going to keep going. So, we've got amazing things coming up, like more personal marketing, advertising into Messenger, AI, chatbots, and easier and faster ways in which you can shop online. And it's phenomenal. So if you're going to take one thing away from this talk away today, this is it. Social media is not going away. In fact, it's only just started. Thank you. Okay, what did you understand on this one? I understand you talking uh, about the how the social the market and how influence I go to those oh four uh two thousand in about the, how the, the social media talking about the, the being like on only only then uh, the, the last minute okay yeah it's interesting how uh this has increased right and the social media impact everybody's life so definitely marketing is through social media is is here to, to stay I believe I mean, it's going to be here for a long time any other comments or opinion hmm. on what you understood on the video yeah she said that more than 50% of world population is connected in social social media. That is true, definitely. So in mind, I mean, I, there are people that they have two cell phones, right? Or they have two uh, Facebook accounts, or two or three uh, Instagram accounts. So how you, you can impact other people? And influencers also are part of this, of this, right? So, uh, yeah, if you want to to reach population, I mean, for example, new generations they don't watch TV anymore; right? they they watch only social media. So the world is changing; it's changing very, very fast. Good. Any other comments or opinion? Yes, teacher. Um, Teresa, Teresa, help mention mention uh, the different social media strategies uh, in the in the time uh, uh, she she uh, showed uh, two times or two years uh, 2004 uh, between 2018 in the different uh, is very very strange uh, the different the power of the social media strategy for example the other in the other um the other strategies uh, is blog podcast video in the personal marketing for example uh, messenger in the other 
Very good. So that is it. And yes, the gap, I mean, how the difference has changed in, in these years uh, is, is big, is huge. And in my house, it's going to be in five, in 10 years. I don't know what is going to happen. I believe that the world is going to be very, very different. Very, very different teacher, yes? Yeah, let's see how it goes. So I would like to see it, but sometimes I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> okay. Good. Any other comments or opinion on this uh, video? Uh, if you haven't had the chance to watch TED videos, TED is amazing. A lot of people interesting. I, I use this a lot in the classes, um, mostly in the advanced classes. It's amazing. So we can analyze some things here. And there are very good videos, very good talks there in that. Good. So we're going to continue with the topic. Teacher, so you... I, wa I, I want a question. Uh, yeah. mm, can, can you send the link for this video? Uh, Definitely. For example, I think in other moment, uh, uh, I watch the video uh, and, and review the 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 That's brief important. for the practice. Definitely, yeah, I can send you that one. So I can send you the link. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay, so let's speak a little bit more about distribution channels and intermediaries. Um, so. What is a distribution channel? Maria Julia wants to be the first one. Okay. What is a, a distribution channel? A distribution channel can be defined as the activities and process, processes required to move a product from the producer to the consumer. Consumer. Also included in the channel are the intermediate intermediaries that are in, involved involved in this movement in any capacity this intermediaries are their party companies that act that act as goalless goalless Wholesalers, wholesalers. Wholesalers, transporter, relier, relier, retailers. And retailers and provide warehouse facilities. Very good, perfect. So this, uh, the class of tonight is going to be about this, but in the future you are going to see a whole book about this. So it's going to be a, an interesting part. So what is a distribution channel? A distribution channel can be defined as the activities and processes required to move a product from the producer to the consumer. So that is it. Uh, many companies, they don't distribute their products anymore. They produce their products uh, and they, they have other companies that they move the product to the consumer. Sometimes it's easier sometimes it's more difficult. I mean, if you go, for example, to Price Mart, you are going to see a lot of products from around the world, right? And uh, how that product is there in that supermarket, that, that is the distribution channel because it's produced, I don't know, in the US or in Canada or in other countries, and they just produce the product and then the distribution channel, they put the product there for you to buy it in the supermarket. So it says also included in the channel are the intermediaries that are involved in this movement in any capacity. So sometimes it's not just one company. For example, in mine, uh, products that come from, I don't know, from Europe. Yeah, the producer finished the product and there are many companies. I mean, if you are going to send that by plane, uh, then you have to move that to the airport. Then you have to be careful about the temperature of the things. Uh, the, um, some products are very, you need to handle very careful because they can be broken or things like that. So um, 
is a huge thing. So this, this is very, very good. Okay, and then it says these intermediaries are third party companies. Uh, what is third party companies? Okay, third party companies are compañías que, how can I explain that? Uh, companies that are involved in the procedure of a product, but it's not the producer. So it's, a, it's another company. It's a different company that is involved there. That will be a third party company. And some of those are the wholesalers. Wholesalers are like, uh, Companies that they like, this is like price mark actually. That they they sell bundles, a lot of products to other really? some like that. Very good. So they they sell to, sometimes to other companies or to other people, but in in large amounts, in, in large quantity. Transporters, retailers. Do you know what is a retailer? It's como el de, detalle. Very good. So this is like stores where you can buy different things at detail. That would be. And uh, warehouse facilities. What is a warehouse? Almacén. Como, como el almacén. Very good. Almacén. Bodega, right? Very good. Uh, and facilities is, is like different things. Edificios. Inside. Very good. Perfect. Okay. So this is a distribution channel. So do you have any questions? Uh, on this slide? No. Teacher. Good. Perfect. Let's move on then. Uh, so, sometimes we have different kinds of distribution channel. Let's check about the direct distribution channel. Uh, let's see. Ernesto, could you please help me reading this one? Okay, teacher. Direct. In this channel, the manufacturer Tutor directly provides the product to the consumer. In this instance, the business may own all elements of its distribution channel or sell through a specific retail location. Internet sales and one-on-one -on -one meetings are also ways to sell directly to the consumer. One benefit of this method is that the company has complete control over the product. It's in image at all stage and the user experience. Perfect, very good. So I believe it's kind of clear, right? The direct channel is, it says in this channel, the manufacturer, what is manufacturer? Fabricante. Production. Very good, the fabricant. So the manufacturer directly provides the product to the consumer. So here, no third party companies, no transportation companies. The producer is the same that puts the product to the consumer, to the, to the people, right? No other company, only one company does everything. In this instance, the business may own all elements of its distribution channel or sell through a specific retail location. So yeah, there are many ways that they can do that one. So they can have their own distribution channel or you, they can have different stores, right? For example, Apple, Apple has uh, stores where you can buy their products and test them and things like that one. So they don't use a uh, retailer. Maybe they use transportation or other companies like that one, but they have their own retailer, uh, they, their own stores, let's say. And then it says, one benefit of this method is that the company has complete control over the product. Its image is at all stages and the uh, user experience. So this is true. Since uh, there is only one company, they have control in everything, right? And the image, I mean, Everything uh, that the people perceive about the product is directly to the company. So that is a very good thing because you you really take care of everything. 
of all the process so you can check into that one. Teacher, huh? this is this is this concept uh, direct is opposite to the last concept. Well, it's not that it's opposite. I mean, when we speak the in distribution channel, we speak about how a product comes from the producer to the product to the consumer. Uh, and this is uh, one of the methods. It doesn't involve uh, okay. third party, uh, but there are others that involve third party. Okay, okay. Good. Thank you. So uh, let's see questions here. Um, stages. What is stages? Etapas. Very good. Those are different. Uh, th those are stages. So. Uh, at all stages, in all the, the steps of the product to get from the production to the consumer, the company is involved in that one. Do you have any questions on this? For me, not teacher. Good. So the other one is the indirect. So let's see. Uh, Ramiro, could you please help me within this one? Indirect. In this channel, a company will use an intermediary to sell a product to the customer. The company may sell to the wholesaler who further distributes to retail outlets. This may raise product costs since each intermediary will get their percentage of the profits. The channel may become necessary for large products who sell throughout hundreds or small retailers. Very good. Thank you, Daniel. So definitely, this is the other one, right? So the internet, uh, in here it says, in this channel, a company will use an intermediary to sell a product to the consumer. So here, yes, we have third-party companies that they are going to help you distributing the product in different stores or different countries depending on the size of the of the company this may raise product costs since each intermediary will get their percentage of the profits so this is important this is more expensive okay that's why it says uh they raise the costs so it's going to increase the costs okay so why why companies need that one because sometimes it's really complex sometimes i mean there are lots of products and lots of countries or lots of cities or stores where they have to go and uh well you have to give a part a percentage of the profits to that company they are going to get some money from this procedure right so that's why it's a little bit expensive uh, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be more expensive than the direct. Because if if we analyze in the direct one, I mean, you have to have um, a warehouse, you have to have trucks or many other things so you can distribute this. If you pay to a company, you just give a percentage of the product that you move. So that is a very good thing. Then it says this channel may become necessary for large producers who sell through hundreds of small retailers. And that is so true. The bigger the company, more of this they need. So that will be, they, they call this part 3PL. 3PL is third party logistics. So logistics is very important in the process here because logistics is money, it's time and it's money. And it's a very important part. Uh, what is further? Anybody? It says the company may sell to a wholesaler who further distributes to retail outlets. So what is further? Además. Mm, not like that, not like that, but it's a good chance. So further is like masaya, right? So beyond my limits, the company can help you. Okay. And 
Perfect. And the other question is outlet. What is an outlet? Como vender este. Los outlets es con donde venden como. Al mayoreo. No, los outlets son como cuando ponen las products, cosas. Products down. Y, ajá, que ya están como un poquito Dado pasados de, baja, de, de temporada. Uh -huh. Ajá, que están buenos, pero. Bueno, por ahí. No, yeah. no están buenos. Sal, 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 <ríe> pero son baratos. Ajá. <ríe> Más yeah. en Estados Unidos. <laughs> yeah, in the US, yeah, that is very common. Yeah. yeah. Cell point. It's like a this like a store actually. It's like a store, but the difference is, uh, as Rene and Maria Julia said, sometimes the products are damaged. For example, Super Selectos, they have an outlet. They have one in San Salvador. Ah, and one in. In Lourdes, hay uno ahí. Hay un vidri outlet ahí. Las tasas de los inodoros es veinticinco dólares. Porque tienen una tiguita, ¿sí? Ah, ahí, ahí. Al comprar de carro. Y lo urdes. Lo urdes. Lo urdes. Lo urdes. Front in Preon. I will visit. Yes, I, I, I buy the a compras para carro. Mm -hmm. Y valía 30 dólares normal. <laughs> eh, 6 dólares lo compré. Yes, I didn't it. know. Yes, yeah. Yes. And, and you know, big companies, they always have that one. I was telling you that Super Selectos, they have this as well. So they have, for example, cans. You know what is a can? Latas. Latas. Very good. They have cans of food that are in, uh, they are good, but they mm. are with, with a heat. With, it's damaged only the can. La lata es la que está dañada, lo demás está bueno. So it's very, very cheap, right? And uh, for example, there in, in Multiplaza, no, not in Multiplaza, in Las Cascadas, uh, there is an outlet for shoes for a dog. So. Ah, yes. Ah, yeah, yeah it's yes. Yeah, it's not that cheap, but it's, it's good, it's good. So, so there are outlets for a lot of companies. So that is interesting. It's a good month. Ah, really? Where is that one? Okay. So, do you have any questions here? It's clear for me, teacher. Perfect. Very good. So, let's go to the next. Uh, dual distribution. That's an interesting one. Let's see. Um, Oseas, could you please help me reading this one? Okay. Dual distribution. In this type of channel, a company may use a combination of direct and indirect selling. The program may, may be sold directly to a consumer, consumer, while in other cases, it may be sold through intermediaries. This type of channel may help reach more consumers, but there may be the danger of channel conflict. The user experience may vary and an inconsistent image or image for the product and a related service may begin to take hold. Very good. So this is both included, right? dual distribution that's why it's called like that dual from two in this type of channel a company may use a combination of direct and indirect selling the product may be sold directly to a consumer while in other cases it may be sold through intermediaries so it's a combination of both depending on where are you located Sometimes you can buy directly from the producer or sometimes there is another store or retailer that is going to sell the product to the consumer. This type of channel may help reach more consumers. And that is the main reason. If you want to reach more consumers, definitely this is, this is for you, right? So sometimes you have to take care by yourself. Sometimes 
you get another comma. Uh, but there might be the danger of channel copy. Yeah, sometimes the people, the uh, consumers, they are confused. Why? Why is different the warranty here than in this other store? Why the price is different? Uh, and there are many, many things that are different. So for example, I was working for Google and it was very conflicted because if you buy, uh, for example, Google Workspace, that is email solution, uh, directly with Google, it was more expensive than with a retailer. And some people, they, they get confused, right? Why? Why? Other company that is not the producer is selling me this product cheaper than you. Okay? So that happens sometimes. And then it says the user experience may vary and an inconsistent image for a product in a related service may be begin to take hold. So yeah, that can impact. When you say uh, may begin to take hold, is because people, because of that uh, confusion, they prefer not to buy the product anymore. Maybe they go to the competency. So that might happen, but you need to analyze what is the best solution for your product. Uh, do you have any questions in this slide? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Reverse channels. Um, Carla, you please help me with this one. Okay, teacher, reverse channels. The last, most non traditional channels allows for the consumer to send a product to the producer. This reverse flow is what distinguishes this method from the others. An example of this is when a consumer recycles and makes money from this activity. This is an interesting one. So a reverse channel is reverse because it's the opposite, right? The last most non-tradition channel allows for the consumer to send a product to the producer. Non-tradition, this is very common. Sometimes you don't have to use not or no. Non is a very common prefix uh, for some situations. Uh, so in this case, uh, the second part of this uh, this part of explain how how this work. So this reverse flow. Do you know what is flow? No. Flujo. Very good. Flujo. Uh, this reverse flow is what distinguishes. What is distinguishes? Distingue. Distinguir. Very good this method from the others. An example of this is when a consumer recycles and makes money from this activity. So uh, yes, for example, there are companies uh, that they say, okay, if you have, for example, the old model of the cell phone, you can bring the cell phone and buy a new one with 50% of the sky. So this is something that they do. You bring back the product and you are going to have one new one uh, with a nice discount. Another, a different way from this one, for example, I remember for Xbox, yeah, Xbox did this once. So they say, if you have the old Xbox, you can sell it to the company and we are going to pay you. We're going to pay you for the product. So here in El Salvador, maybe the most common is the batteries, right? When you change the car's batteries, they they pay for the old battery. You $10. Give the, yeah, that is, that is the most common, right? <laughs> so this is reverse channel. So you bring your battery and we're going to pay for, for that old battery too. Interesting, right? <laughs> okay, uh, do you guys have any question on this slide? I clear, teacher. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So let's read the other one. Let's see. Um, Juan Roberto, could you please help me reading this one? Okay, teacher. Distribution channel intermediaries are middlemen who play a crucial role in the distribution process. 
These middlemen facilitate a distribution process through their experience and expertise. This, there are four main types of intermediaries. Number one, agent. The agent is an important in the independent entity who acts as an extension to the producer by representing them to the user. An agent never actually gains ownership of the product and usually make money from commissions and fees paid for the service. Very good, perfect. So uh, distribution channel says are intermediaries. Uh, are middlemen. Middlemen is a synonym of intermediary. So it's somebody that is in the middle of a process, right? Uh, who play a crucial role in the distribution process. These middlemen facilitate the distribution process through their experience and expertise. What is expertise? La experticia, la experiencia. Very good. That is it. There are four main types of intermediaries. And the first one is an agent, a free agent. Okay, it's not a company, but a one person that sometimes will be able to distribute. Uh, actually, sometimes there are companies that are agents. And it says, the agent is an in independent entity who acts as an extension of the producer by representing them to the user. So that is it. It's an extension of the producer because they represent, I mean, they handle your product. They manage everything so people can buy from them. An agent never actually gains ownership of the product. That is true, right? It's not their product. They just transport from one point to the other one. That's the only thing that they do. So it's not their product. They just do that. And it says, and usually make money from commissions and fees paid for their services. What is fees? Fees of ganancias? Mm, no, it's not like that. It's like a payment. A fee is like a payment that you have to do. An example of fee is, for example, in your birthday, uh, the government, they know that it's your birthday and you have to pay for the circulation card of your car. So that is a fee. You have to pay so you can move in your car. Uh, another fee, for example, are taxes or things that you have to pay, right? You have a fee for the water, for the electricity, things like that. To, to, to... Is uh -huh. eh, so it's they, excuse me. Eh, eh, for example, uh, the new sellers, eh, the product like a kit, super rare, um, and uh, another, eh, this uh, payment, my product in the one supermarket and uh, uh, delivery in my house. And uh, plus the a fee uh, uh, for the the this uh, the purchase uh, for each item this purchase exactly that is actually a very good example. So, uh, for example, if you are using pedidos uh, ya, uh, that is a very good example. You see the the price of the product, and then when you are going to finish. Uh, the purchase that it says the fee for delivery is one dollar, two dollars, two fifty, something like that. So that is the, the fee. So they are exactly this one. They are intermediaries. They don't cook your food, so they just transport that one from one point to the other one. Very good, perfect. Okay, do you have any questions on this? Okay, let's move on then. So wholesalers, very good. This is going to be for Blanca Tunaka. Wholesalers. Wholesalers are 
small sellers are are also independent entities, this, but they actually purchase with from a, a producer in bulk and store them in warehouse warehouse. These goods, these goods are then resold in smaller amounts at a profit. Gullis sellers seldom sell directly to good sellers. Seldom sell directly to an end user. Their customers are usually another intermediary such as a retailer. Very good. So somebody said that in Spanish, right? Mayoristas. So wholesalers are also independent entities. So not part of the company. But they actually purchase goods from a producer. So uh, they don't transport. They don't do that one. They buy the products, okay? For a price that is less, so it's not the full price, okay? Uh, they they buy a lot of products. Uh, what is purchase, anybody? Compras. Very good. And what is bulk? Do you remember bulk? Es uh, paquete, uh, combo. Exactly. So they buy a lot of products in bulk. And they, they store them in warehouses, okay? And then after that one, this product, these goods are resold. What is resold? Reventa. Very good. They resell these products in smaller amounts at a profit. So what they do is they resell. that They, they profit. The money they do is because they resell. Okay, and then it says wholesalers seldom sell directly to an end user. What is seldom? Uh, muy raro, rara, rara vez. Very good. So wholesalers rara seldom, vez. yeah, good. Seldom sell directly to an end user. So in my home is the distribution channel. The producer creates the product. The wholesaler says, okay, I'm going to buy you this product in, I don't know, in 50 cents and they put all the products in a warehouse and they buy i mean they sell that not to the consumer they sell that to retailers okay mr retailer they say uh, i'm going to sell this product in 75 cents and then the retailer say sells that product to the consumers to us in one dollar so that is the process right okay it's like a, a market la tiendona. Something like that. Very good. That is a wholesale. Good. Do you have any questions on this one? No, teacher. All right. Let's move on then. Number three are distributors. Uh, let's see. Rene, could you please help me with this one? Okay, distributor. Similar to word seller, distributor differ in one regard. Trigger. A word seller may may carry a variety of competition brands and product types. A distributor, however, will only carry products from a single brand or company. A uh, distributor distributors may have a close relationship with the producer. Very producer. good. Perfect. So distributors are similar to wholesalers. The main difference is that the wholesalers they can buy products from any company. A lot of products, different kinds of products from many, many companies. But the distributors they just distribute for one company. So it's exclusive just for this company. Maybe there are different products, 
but only for that company. So it says similar to wholesalers, distributors differ in one regard. A wholesaler may carry a variety of competition brands and product types. A distributor, however, will only carry products from a single brand or company. What is carry? Acarrear. Okay, very good. Cargar. Very good. That is it. And teacher, what it says, uh -huh. teacher, in, in this point, uh, I understand that the distributor, this, uh, the distributor, uh, is brand loyalty. Something like that. Yeah, they are working just with one brand. That is it. Okay. Okay. What's the mean? A, a distributor. Yeah, distributor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that's actually what it says a single brand company. What is single? Uno. Uno Only in this one. Case. Only one, right? That's actually is related to what uh, Ernest said. Single is like loyal, just with you, right? Just with this company. And then it says it says a distributor may have a close relationship with the producer, definitely. So they have a nice relationship. Uh, they are trained, they are, I mean, they are very close. They are not part of the company, but they know many things about the product and the company. Good, uh, any questions here? Yes, uh, teacher, uh, distrib distributors differ in one regard. Regard is a, uh, Una cualidad o qué? Okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't the word, know. yeah, the word regard has many uses. In this case, it is like in one aspect. One aspect, different in una sola cosa. Uh -huh. Los distribuidores difieren en una sola cosa, sería algo así. Something like that, yeah. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Good. Uh, let's move on to the number four, retailers. Let's see. Uh, Paula, will you please read this one? Not possible. Let's see then. Uh, Silvia, Patricia. Retailers. Sailors and distributors will sell the products that they have acquired to the retailer at a profit. Retailers will then stock the goods and sell them to the ultimate and user at a profit. Very good. Perfect. So it says retailers, wholesalers, and distributors will sell the products that they have acquired. What is acquired, anybody? Adquirir. Very good. So that they have acquired to the retailer at a profit. Yeah, it's a chain, right? Everybody wants to gain some money with this. So retailers will then stock the goods and sell them to the ultimate end user at a profit. That's what they do, okay? So I believe this is kind of clear. Let me check. Uh, stock. What is stock? Um, guardar. I'm sorry. Colocar. Some like that one. So stock is, is related to inventory, right? When inventario. You have a, exactly. When you have a stock of inventory, is because you have available for selling. Exactly. That is. Teacher. Yep. The distributor uh, sells more expensive than oil sailors. Not necessarily. Uh, it's almost the same. Actually, wholesalers uh, may, may sell a little bit more expensive, but that depends on the product, depends on the company, depends on the discount that they give. Yeah, so, for example, um, for Sodas, you know, there are places where you can, uh, the name of that one are like depositors, where you can oh, buy. Very, very famous. Aha. Uh -huh. 
those are like distributors, right? Not wholesalers, uh, because they have a relationship directly with with the company and they sell uh, for retailers. But anybody can go and buy from from those. So something like that. So it depends. It depends on many things. It can be more one or more the other. Yes, but but uh, sell beer in the deposito is is more cheap than exactly. than the, the the other the other distributor. That is true. That is true. It's because uh the purpose of the depositos is to sell to retailers, but it's open to anybody. So if you want to buy only six beers, they sell you. If they want to buy, if you want to buy more than that, they can sell to you. So that is the idea of that one. But I mean, yeah, depending on that one, it's because of the, it's because of the relationship that you have with the company. Depending on that, uh, okay. that is going to be the percentage or the pricing that you are going to give to other people. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, so importance of distribution channel. Aida Isabel. Importance okay. of distribution channel. This may seem simply possible and smarter for a company to directly distribute its own product without the help of channel or an intermediary. This is especially so because the internet allows sellers and buyers to interact in real time. But in actual practice, it may not make business sense for a company to set up its own distribution operation. Very good, perfect. So. It says it may seem simplistically possible and smarter for a company to directly distribute its own product without the help of a channel of any terminals. So yes, maybe in our mind, we think why? Why a company pay other company so they can distribute uh, my products? But it's not, it's not easy, right? Then it says, this is especially so because the internet allows sellers and buyers to interact in real time. But in actual practice, it may not make business sense for a company to set up its own distribution operation. So it's very expensive, first of all, right? If you have your own distribution channel, you have to pay a warehouse, people who takes care of everything, uh, vehicles for you to move everything. Uh, you need to pay people to move that one and drive. Um, you need to check about the stock inventories. I mean, it's very complex. So some companies, large companies, they prefer to pay to another company instead of checking into that complex problem. So that would be it the importance of the distribution channels. So anybody has a question? For example, what is sense? Pare al parecer? Puede mm, parecer? It could be, but actually sense is sentido. Uh, in este caso, it doesn't make sense. No tiene sentido, right? Mm -hmm. So, some like that. Okay. And let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, let's see. I guess it's not possible for you or Jonathan, right? Okay. No, teacher. Okay, no problem. No worries. Uh, Ana Veronica. Large scale producer of consumer goods, for example, need to stock items of basic necessary, such as soap, uh, toilet paper, and toothpaste. Is a many small and large store is a many uh, location as possible. This location may be as close together as to all, all the same street, 
They may also the remote rural convenience store, rest stop, stops and petrol station. I would be counterproductive and costly for the company to attempt to achieve this with without a detailed distribution channel. Very good, perfect. So this is like the continuation of the other part, why this is very important. So it says large scales producers of consumer goods, for example. What is large scale? Or large scale producers? A gran escala. Very good, a gran escala. Productores a gran escala. So, uh, need to stock items of basic necessity, such as soap, toilet paper, and toothpaste in as many small and large stores in as many locations as possible. So it's very complex. In mind that you are selling, yeah, toothpaste, and you have to put that in all the supermarkets in all the country. Oh, that is that is difficult, right? It's very difficult. So these locations may be as close together as two in the same street. They may also be remote rural convenience stores. Rest stops and petrol station. What is rest stops? Okay, in the United States, the rest stops are things like hotels, small hotels, or little places where you can buy different kinds of things. Okay, similar to the stores in the gas station, that is petrol station, right? It's very similar, but without the gas. So that would be it. It will be counterproductive. What is counterproductive? Okay, contraproductivo. Contra, yeah, something that is not productive. And costly, sorry, very expensive for the company to attempt to achieve this without a detailed distribution chart. What is attempt? To intent. Very good. To attempt, intentar, uh, achieve, uh, alcanzar. Right? So it's, it's difficult. Not impossible, but it's, it's very difficult. Uh, any questions here? What is the no, meaning? Okay. Go ahead. Uh -huh. What is the meaning of them? Uh, Intentar. Intentar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other question? Okay. Uh, let's see. This is going to be for. Let me just check. Oh, Carla Alejandro. Okay, teacher. Even in cases where a company does sell directly, there remain activities that are performed by an outside company. A laptop may be sold from a company website to a consumer directly, but it will be sent out using an ex existing courier service. This is why in some form of the or the other, all producers must rely on a distribution channel. Very good. So it says even in cases where a company does sell directly. What is even? Aún incluso. Very good, perfect. And then it says uh, there remain activities that are performed by an outside company. What is remain? Remanente. Very good. Uh, aún queda. Hay, hay algo que hay. So, so that would be, there remain activities that are performed. What is performed? Okay, ejecutado. That would be, by an outside. A laptop may be sold from a company website to a consumer directly but it will be sent out using an existing courier service. What is courier service? 
Servicio de envío. That is it. It's like a delivery. This is why in some form or the other, all producers more rely on a distribution channel. So that is true. Almost all the companies, they use a distribution channel. So large companies, definitely, they use a distribution channel. Rely, what is rely? Confiar. Very good. It's like that one. Confiar. Very good. Any questions here on this one? Perfect. So let's move on. And then it says marketing channel decisions. Uh, this is going to be for Maria Fudu. I'm here, teacher. Okay. Uh, is it possible for you Make, to read? Uh, making, making, making channel decision, setting goals and direction. The first step to this, this, this deciding the best distribution channel to use a company needs to analyze the customer and understand their need, dispose, and finally channel object, work with distribution, task, and process. Very good. So now we know that it's very important, a distribution channel for our products. But there are many companies that they can do this job. DHL, uh, FedEx, um, the national mail, I don't know. There are many, many people that you can get to help you. How do you choose the best company? How do you choose the best third party company that is going to help you distributing your product? So the first thing is setting goals and directions. What you want to achieve, what you want to do. So the first step to deciding the best distribution channel to use a company is to analyze the customer and understand their needs. This is very important because not all the customers are going to be the same, depending on the age, depending on if they are men and women or if they live here in this uh, city or this other city. Many things are related. So we need to analyze that one. So we understand what they want. We want something nice, something fast, something cheap. So we need to analyze that. Then discuss and finalize channel objectives. Not the objectives of the company, but the objectives on the distribution channel. I want this to be fast. I want this to be reliable. I want this to be cheap. Sometimes cheap is not fast, right? So we need to decide what we want. And the other one says work at distribution tasks and processes. So you need to know what are the steps for you to distribute this one. So it's not the same to distribute, I don't know, uh, computers than to distribute ice cream. For this, this, this computer, we need to handle that careful. For the ice cream, we need to have a uh, cold freezing cars, vehicles for you to transport, transport. So everything is important. Okay, so do you have any questions here? Okay, let's move to the other one. Key questions to check what are those the most important. Let's see. Uh, Ernesto. Some key questions to ask to finalize in these three areas include um, where do users seek to purchase a product? If it's a physical store, physical, physical store, is it a supermarket or a specialist store? Is it an online store 
or a catalog. What is the access available to the right distribution channel? What are competitors doing? Are they successful? Can best practices be used in making channel decisions? Very good. So these are questions that you can ask yourself so you can identify the best distribution channel. Definitely. For example, where do you use seek to purchase the product? What is seek? Seek, buscar. Very good. If it's a physical store, is it a supermarket or a special store? Is it an online store or a catalog? Well, and there are many other questions. Like what is the access available to the right distribution channels? Uh, what is available? Do you remember? Disponible. Very good. What are competitors doing? Are they successful? Can best practices be used in making channel decisions? So all these questions and many other are things that we need to ask ourselves. So we can identify the best distribution channel. Uh, let me see if there is any question in the world here. I don't think so. No, uh, do you have any questions here? No, for me, not teacher. Okay, very good. Let's go to selecting distribution strategies. Um, Ramiro. Selecting distribution strategies. A company may need to use different strategies for different types of products. Three main strategies uh, that can be used are intensive distribution, this, this strategy may be used to distribute lower prices products that may be in pulse purchase. Items are stocked at a large number of outlets and may include things uh, such as mint, gums, or candy, as well as, as basic supplies and necessities. Very good, perfect. So. Uh, there are different strategies for us to distribute, right? A company may need to use different strategies for different types of products. So depending on the product, and that is very important, is how you are going to select the distribution channel. Three main strategies are the ones that we'll check. The first one is intensive distribution. So as the word says, intensive is a lot, right? Very fast, very fluid. So this strategy may be used to distribute lower prices products. So that is interesting because it's not for expensive products. It's for products that are not that expensive. And that impose the purchases. Items are stopped at a large number of outlets and may include things such as mints. Do you know what is mints? Mentas. Very good. Gum, that is bubble gum, uh, or candy, as well as basic supplies and necessities. So all these basic products, we can have intensive distribution because are products that everybody uh, are looking to get as well. It's not that expensive and we can move that without much problem. Questions on this? Okay, next one says selective distribution. Juan Roberto. Selective distribution. In this strategy, a product may, may be sold as a select, selective number of outlets. This may include either items such as a computer or household appliances that are costly but need to be somewhat widely available to allow a consumer to compare. Exclusive distribution. A higher priced item may, may be sold at a single outlet. This is exclusive, exclusive distribution. Cars may be, may be an example of this type of strategy. Very good. So we have two here, two strategies. First one says selective 
distribution. In this strategy, a product may be sold at a selective number of outlets. It's not for everybody. It's just for this specific. For example, I mean, uh, I believe that you see sometimes some offers or some products that are available not everywhere, just in selected places. So is this one, this strategy. This may include items such as computers or household appliances. What is household appliances? Anybody knows? Okay. So, so apparatos? Uh, yeah, uh, apparatos uh, that you yeah. use for, for uh -huh. devices, you know, like, I don't know, the microwave and things like that. Okay. So, and then it says that are costly, but need to be somewhat widely available to allow consumer to compare. What is somewhat? Okay, somewhere is de alguna manera. Okay, and the other one is widely. What is widely? Mucho, mucha. Ampliamente. Okay. Mucha disponibilidad. Amplia disponibilidad. Exactly. So that will be it. Uh, to allow consumer to compare. So the other one says exclusive distribution. Also, this is a very common strategy. A higher priced item may be sold at a single outlet. This is exclusive distribution. Cars may be an example of this type of stuff. So this means that this product that I want is sold only in this store. You cannot find this in all the stores, only in this one. So this is exclusive distribution. So what they want to do with this strategy is uh, for people to go to that places, right? So they know the service or the products that they sell in those places. Uh, anybody has a question here? Pronunciation questions or vocabulary questions? Okay, so assessing benefits of distribution channels. Um, let's see who's going to do that. Um, Oseas, is it possible for you? Not possible. Let's see, Paola Hernandez. Okay, René Molina. Okay. okay. A sexy benefit of distribution channel with make it channel decision, a company may need to weigh the benefit of a partner with the associate associate Associated costs. Cost. Associated cost. Some potential benefits to look out for include. Especially signs intermediaries are expert at that they do. They can perform the task better and more and more cost effectively effectively. That done a company itself. 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 Very good. So, this is the first part. So, assessing benefits or distribution channels. While, do you know what is while? Mientras. Mientras. Very good. While making channel decisions, a company may need to weigh. What is weigh? Way, caminos. 
Um, that is way, but this is way. Uh, so similar. way is, yeah, actually way is. Considerar. It could be considerar. Similar a medir. Medir. La palabra en sí significa pesar, pero se, se refiere aquí a, a revisar, a comparar, a revisar. Right, so that would be uh, to weigh the benefits of a partner with the associated costs. Some potential benefits to look out for include specialists, definitely. The people that they do this, they are special. They know what they're doing. Since intermediaries are experts at what they do, they can perform the task better and more cost effectively than a company itself. So that is true. Since that is their business, they know what to do and how to do all these things. So it's a very, very nice uh, benefit. Any questions here? Any word or pronunciation? Okay. Yes, uh -huh. in, the, in, the, in the concept specialist, since intermediaries, uh -huh. this is this is the the, the good the pronunciation uh, yes pronunciation yeah since intermediaries intermediaries okay thank you you're welcome okay let's move to the other benefits let's see. Silvia Patricia. Quick exchange type. The in specialist and using establishes process intermediaries are able to ensure delivery faster and on time. Variety for the consumer. Right. By by the selling to retailers, consumers are able to choose between our between a vari varieties of right. products, varieties of products without having having to visit multi multiple stores belonging to each individual producer. Okay, very good. So let's check into that one. The first one says quick exchange time. What is quick? Rapid. Very good. Says being a specialist. What is being? Siendo. Siendo. Very good. Uh, being a specialist and using established processes, intermediaries are able to ensure deliveries faster and on time. That is for sure. What is ensure? You send the product for the adult person, right? Yeah. So to be sure about the deliveries are fast and very on time. That would be. And the other one says a variety for the consumers by selling through retailers. Consumers are able to choose between a uh, varieties of products without having to visit multiple stores belonging to each individual product. I believe this is very clear. So you can go to one store and see a lot of products. That is very convenient. What is belonging? Very that nice. Okay. Um, do you have any questions here? For me, it's clear, teacher. Perfect. Let's move to the next one. Small quantities. Um, Aida, Isabel, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay. Small uh, quanti quantities. 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 Okay. 
Intermediaries allow the cost of transportation to be divided in this in turn allows consumers to buy small quantity. I don't remember the things. Quantities. Quantity, okay. Of a product uh, rather than having to make bulk purchase. This is possible when a, a full sailor wholesaler buys is buys is bulk stores the product in a warehouse and then and then provides the product to relators located Retailers. close by at oh what retailers okay retailers located close by at a lower transportation cost very good. So it says small quantities. This is another uh, benefit, right? Uh, in terms there is a low, the cost of transportation to be divided. And this in turn allows consumer to buy small quantities of product rather than having to make bulk purchases. So for consumers, it's better this one because you can buy one, two, three products only and that's fine. And because the delivery or the logistic company, they go to different routes to give you, the, to deliver, the, for example, the product. And that is very convenient for the consumer, right? Uh, what is allows? Do you remember? Uh, permitir. Very good. Uh, this is... Let me check. So this is possible when a wholesaler buys in bulk, stores the product in a warehouse, and then provides the product to retailers located close by at lower transportation costs. Definitely, this is something very important, right? Because uh, since you are, let's say that you are uh, selling this in bulk, I mean, is going to give you a, a lot of benefits. Anybody has a question here? Okay, very good. Let's go to the next uh, other two. Uh, Monica Avalos. Not possible. Uh, Jennifer Amaya. Not possible. We did you. Okay, go ahead. Sales creation. Uh, since retailer and wholesalers have their own stake in the product, they, they may have their own advertising or promotion for that help generate sales. Payment option. Retailers may create payment plan and option for customer allowing easier purchase. Very good. Perfect. So, sales creation says, since retailers and wholesalers have their own stakes, what is stakes? Participar, participación. It yeah, it can be something like that. So they have some participation in the product. They may have their own advertising or promotions efforts that help generate sales. So that happens. I mean, if if you see uh, online, Facebook, or many other places, you will see that there are advertising from super selectors, right? They say this product is in offer. Come on Tuesdays, and you are going to have that one. But it's not their product; it's the product of other company. And this is a very good advantage because you're going to have the product advertised, so and you don't have to pay for that. One. So you pay for the distribution, but not for the advertising, right? And then it says, um, "All promotion efforts." that help generate sales. And the last one says payment options. Retailers may create payment plans 
and options for customers allowing easier purchase. This is very, very common nowadays, right? They tell you if you have the credit card of Banco, any bank, you can pay in 12 months with no interest. So yeah, some companies they they really explode these kind of offerings. So they uh, get to more public, to more people. Okay. Good. Sometimes Any questions? The, excuse me. Sometimes uh, this uh, this option the, the for payment is very good. Uh, for example, when uh, I need to uh, purchase uh, four tires for the cars, it's uh, a, a big uh, inversion. Uh, uh, a uh, payment in 12 months without the the interest is very good that is true it's a very good sometimes with the tires if you buy the four tires you get one for free right so that is amazing yes so, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a very good thing and i mean it's something that is very attractive for everybody so we are looking for those kind of deals so we can take advantage of that. And uh, it's, it's a very so, good strategy. Go ahead. It's a, the, the other option of the pay, um, maybe I think, I think or, or I remember, uh, if you want uh, any product, uh, but if you buy in a specific credit card, uh, you have a discount. Exactly. Yeah, you have a discount if you use that car or if you go to this place. Or this strategy is definitely very good. And these are things. Uh, I mean, uh, when you get, for example, this this kind of benefits is made by the company that is distributing right the product. For example, at supermarket, it's very common also to to, to see that there are some. Uh, offers for different products in different places. So, and that is something that the supermarket does, not the company that produces the the product. Right? It's just something from the company. So, it's a very very good thing. Or, and or, it's for, a... example, or, or for example, teacher, if if you go to eat at the La Pampa restaurant, and uh, you have a uh, the club target of the La Prensa Gráfica, uh, you have 10 or 15 percent discount. Very good. So that that is all, uh, another example, right? Because it's like an alliance between two companies that they are trying to to promote. They are trying to get more customers, uh, and definitely that works because I mean here we. We are speaking about that one because we know they exist and we take advantage of those. Definitely, it's a very good thing. Or, or payment with a point, uh, loyalty benefits. That is also very good, definitely. Because, I mean, it's very it's really nice that you pass the card and they tell you you have $20, 40 That is a very good thing, definitely. And it's something that the bank or some other companies they want to to push right so you get used to use that product by for buying materials good and the last one is information um let's see ernesto okay but uh the information is the the last the last slide teacher uh the last slide for today Okay, information, okay? okay? That distribution channel can provide valuable information on the product and its acceptability, allowing product de development as well as an idea of emergency consumer trends and behaviors. Very good, so this is information. The distribution channel can provide valuable information on the product and its acceptability. Okay, this is uh, very important because since the distribution channel are 
handling the product. Uh, and for example, the retailers that are the ones that sell these products to, to the public, they can tell you, they can tell the company, people like this product. People, they prefer this color. People, they don't like this product. They prefer you to change the envelope or uh, the color of the top parts. I don't know. There are uh, There is feedback that those companies can give you so you can improve in many things. Uh, so it says allowing product development as well as an idea of emerging consumer trends and behavior. Do you remember what is trend? Trends, I remember the meaning is a tendencia. Very good. That is it. Okay, so those are the benefits of distribution channel. You can see that it's very important, all right? And here is just like the qualities of this. If we calculate the money that you save and the time that you save by using another company, that is going to be very good. For this hero, teacher, the information is power. Definitely. Yeah, because you can use that one to improve in many ways. It is. Very good, perfect, my friends. So this is the class of tonight. Do you have any questions before we finish? No, teacher, thank you. Very good. So let's check the attendance. Remember, tomorrow there is no class until Monday. So Why, teacher, why, why? Because, <laughs> well, if you want, we can come. <laughs> Aida Isabel López Bonilla. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Okay. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca Rodríguez. Present. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenor. Here, teacher. Good. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Nice. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisnero. Present. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present Ro teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanida Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Ah, ok. And Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Perfect, my friends. It was a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Have a very good night. See you on Monday. And a good night. Dream in English. Thank see you. you. See you, teacher. See you on the march tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. Good night, everybody. I'm here. <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry, but I went to the bathroom. No worries. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Hello.
Pero que okay, me Hello.
y abajo Everyone. 